Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Freezes 515. Our off-grid solar build is finally finished, and we've been living in our system now for eight months, and we can confidently say we freaking love it. This system was installed in Las Vegas, and now we're in the Pacific Northwest at one of our favorite states, Oregon. So we've had a chance to test this system in almost every environment, and we can't wait to show you how it works and how it's affected the way we live in almost every single way. This is the Overton Wildlife Refuge area. Got here last night in the dark so we couldn't record anything and it's 5 30 a.m. It's a big day today. We're going to Apache RV. We're going to go see Tom again. 800 watts just isn't enough for this family. We need 800 more. Our two-way fridge is a piece of junk. We went with a residential electric, so we're gonna add some more solar panels to compensate for that energy on the grid. We think we got a good plan going, so we're heading out there to Vegas this morning. Time to hit the road. Time to get going. Let's go see Tom. So here's the finished product and what the entire outfit looks like. We'll have eight stationary panels of 200 watts, so a total solar array of 1,600 watts. Our batteries will have a total of 400 amp hours of lithium. Lithiums continue to drop in price on Amazon. They weigh a lot less and you can fully discharge these batteries. Guys, lead is dead. They have enormous weight and you can only discharge them to 50%. And if you go below that, you'll seriously damage the battery. In order to harvest the most solar possible with the addition of the new panels, we'll need to upgrade the charger to the next level. What we have in there currently is the 15070, and we're gonna upgrade that to the 15100. The difference is in the numbers, 100 amps versus 70 amps of charging. Now, this technology just completely blows my mind. Getting 100 amps of charging power from the sun, it's incredible. The next thing we have is the 3000 watt Victron inverter charger. This is the brains of the system and what allows you to run all of your household items on your battery stored power. So we're talking TV, refrigerator, coffee maker, two laptops, monitors, a microwave, e-bike charging, fans, and electric cooking. These are all things that we have to plan for personally. And this inverter also comes with a 120 amp charger. So if you're plugged into shore power or into maybe your backup generator, you'll produce 120 amp charge Charging. This comes in extremely handy and can charge up your battery bank in a hurry. So autonomy is backup power. Just to clarify that terminology for you. And people will say that you need two to three days of autonomy. And that power is going to come from your ability to store it. In the desert, we thrived. We would max out our battery bank every single day, no question. So autonomy wasn't as important to us. But now that we're in Oregon, you get less opportunity for sunshine. Whether that's heavy clouds, rains, fires, tall trees, or the fact that we're further from the equator, take your pick. So even on a rainy day, we're likely to be inside the camper consuming energy in some way. Not only are you consuming more energy than normal, you're also not banking any energy due to the weather conditions outside. We do not have the space to expand our battery bank unless I wanted our entire underbed storage to be a battery bank. So it's important for us to have a generator for our backup power. This is a great example of a time where you need to use your generator. Um, right now, we have the forest fires right behind me. It's been blocking our solar all day. There you can see the sun is its like a, a weird orange tint. Now, the sunsets have been amazing, but it's really been hurting for our solar. What I wanted to explain to you was that if you're going with a generator as a backup, you want to make sure that your generator can handle your charger. Now, my charger is 120 amps on the Victron 3000 watt inverter. 120 amps is is like running a microwave. So it's kind of a large ask. You wanna make sure you have a generator that can handle whatever your charging situation is. All right, we're gonna start this guy up. Yeah, that looks good. So let's pull it up right here. All 
on my smart shunt, I'm getting 134.43 positive amps to the battery bank right now. This generator here is 5,500 watts. So charging at 120 amps, which is fantastic, you don't want to be maxing it out at 100% and just have it screaming the entire time. You want to leave a little meat on the bone, you know, make sure it doesn't work so hard. While we're running that to compensate for the forest fire smoke, I've noticed that we're, we are getting some ash falling in the air now. The fire is getting a lot closer. Uh, look at the sun. It's all orange. This is all smoke, not clouds. The fire's like over there. I don't know how many miles away, but you know, enough to where we don't have to worry yet. We're gonna go up this bad boy here and see if we can see how much ash has collected on the solar panels and see if maybe it's more than I think. So let's check it out. All right. Oh, wow. Let me get settled on here. Let me just do this real quick. Look at this stuff falling. This has got to be affecting the solar. Don't you think? It's all down there. You can see... I don't know how good the phone is picking this up, but you can see debris all over the panels and all over there as well. Uh, this is actually affecting it quite a bit more than I thought. Okay, let's get back to autonomy. We have a 400 amp hour battery bank. According to my app here, we use a total of 225 amp hours per day. Now, if you divide that by our 400 amp hour battery bank, you're gonna end up with about 56% usage. We fall short of that two to three day autonomy goal based on our usage. So that's some easy math for you to figure out your autonomy once you know how much your daily usage is gonna be. But honestly, I suspect 225 amp hours is a pretty high consumption compared to some of our peers out here. So 400 amp hours might be the appropriate amount of autonomy for you. And it just depends on your usage. Got covers that, that go on place behind it. I just have them off now so you can see it all. Got your two batteries here. Solar charge controller is there. That's the smart shunt for monitoring everything. And then this here is the service disconnect for the inverter. Mm -hmm. And this is the fuse for the inverter. We also added this smart dongle here that connects to the inverter and that lets you turn the inverter on and off. So the freedom and flexibility that passive energy can give you is fantastic. But consider this. With the right solar power system, most RVers can completely eliminate camping fees. Big deal, Brian. Camping's cheap, right? Wrong. According to JD Power, the average cost to park an RV is a little over $29 per night. If you take $29 times 365 days a year, you'll end up with $10,585 on average. Here's another source. Annual RV camping fees can vary from $6,000 to $14,400, depending on the location and the amenities. Now, before you think there's no way that's accurate, Dare went back and reviewed every reservation, every receipt, every self-pay box, and we had a total of $7,300 in camping fees last year. Reading about these stats online is one thing, but actually paying for them is completely different, and it's gross. I took this shocking information and filed it in this folder here. Next, we can count on camping fees and annual memberships increasing across the board year over year. That's pretty normal. We've already seen this in places that we had just been in the previous year. Your alternatives to solar energy would be the fossil fuel method, which would be with a generator. And if you're thinking about starting up this way, it can be a little cheaper, but not by much. Our old camper was set up this way. I mean, we're talking lithium batteries, inverters, lithium chargers, wiring, and a generator. So after you get done outfitting your new rig with three to $5,000 worth of equipment, you're still stuck 
burning fuel every day and paying for it. When we were fossil fuel boondocking last year, we figured it was costing us around $9 per day to meet our energy needs. Now, if you take that times 365 days per year, you get $3,285 worth of fuel costs, and that's just for your generator. You can live this way. We did it for a year and a half, but you grow weary of the generator running, the maintenance on it, it seems constant. You have to babysit it on occasions. Having to be around when your generator's running to recharge your bank in some cases can ruin your plans. Is solar worth it? DIY or not, solar is gonna cost you. Let's go to the Victron Connect app and let's see what it's telling us. So since the new panel install in March, my total solar harvest has been 727 kilowatt hours. And you can see right here, 761 kilowatt hours has been my total charged energy in that same amount of time. So if you're curious, my solar covers 95% of our energy needs so far. The other 5% have been for one day of paid camping where we had to meet a repairman, and the others were on poor solar days and I had to use my generator. So here's the big number. For our entire system, all the equipment and install, we paid roughly $11,400. And I know that number looks crazy. So is solar worth it? I think you need to ask yourself, how often do you plan on being on the road? And if your answer is full time or most of the time, then I don't think you're gonna have any problem getting your money back. And based on our first year's data, we spent $7,300 in camping fees and then fossil fuel boondocking the times we weren't paying. So $9 per day. And I'm telling you right now, running the generator gets old. So paying for power in a campground was like a break for me. Having water and sewer was nice too, but after you've been on the road for a little while, you start to see where you can get your free water and dump your tanks for free or at least free with purchase. Wow, guys, look at this. This is awesome. Awesome. Free dump, baby. We are two rigging it with the newbies. Mom and dad are in town for a week and we are getting some water and dumping our takes for the first time so we can get set up for the week. Little Yellowstone dumpage. How awesome is this little sweet gym we found. Free dump. Right off the interstate. A free dump. We will take it. Rarely are we forced into a fee-based dumping and water scenario, but if we are, they're typically in between five to $15 and we're happy to pay. So like I said, we've been living in our system now for eight months with one night of paid camping. And so how do we make this work? Is that you need to understand the boondocking life and how to navigate the free lands of the West. Another awesome freeze I'm find. We're out here, not far from Valley of Fire. We are on a Christmas Day scout mission and we just found this little tiny hidden gym spot. Yes, we did. Look, Look at, at how this awesome this is. View. We love this place. We've been here two nights. This place is for sure happening again. You know it is. Staying in national forests, BLM lands, state lands, all of these things help a great deal and keep us away from paying expensive camping fees. And for this reason, our solar will have paid for itself in the next 12 months of being on the road, which is fine by us because that's where we plan on being. So remember, you can pay 6 to 14 k annually in camping fees, or you can invest in solar one time and get boondocking right away. We've thrived outside the camping fee system and within. And I will tell you that the best camping spots in this world are free. Trust me. Darian and I want to thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel now, and we'll see you next time.